It's Friday here at Duca's Copy TV, and joining me for the weekly wrap-up is Sebastian Gailey, based in New York. Hello, Sebastian. Thank you for joining us. To kick things off, what has been a big market mover for you over the past week? Well, what we've seen is, is actually a break in uh, your dollar lower. I think uh, what, what you're seeing, particularly into the end of the month, is uh, kind of a, a steady uh, move out of the euro, particularly short-term uh, money markets in the, in the euro and short-term uh, assets there. As yields have gone negative, there's been essentially a desperation for yields that you can see both uh, for asset managers and as well as reserve managers. That is naturally leading investors to sell euros and buy a dollar, particularly a dollar fixed income and other assets, and, and even forcing them to take a slightly longer dated uh, positions within uh, dollar fixed income, even though they're afraid that uh, the Fed will uh, eventually have to increase interest rates. The consequence of that is uh, euro dollar as well as dollar crosses um, have uh, basically d done uh, quite well. That is, the dollar has uh, risen. Uh, behind that, of course, you had some uh, slightly worrying uh, Chinese data, which, of course, has uh, helped a little bit to put some pressure, a uh, positive pressure on the dollar and, and, of course, some negative pressure on commodity currencies. But it is mostly a function of what the ECB has done in the past, which is go for negative interest rates and clear indications that given a low, very low inflation environment, they probably will have to do it again, um, that people have to go long dollar and increasingly so. So we're seeing some pretty uh, significant breakout in uh, dollar crosses. Momentum is very strong uh, and continues to be strong. And that probably will continue, uh, whereas if you look in the yen cross, that probably will start to fade. The dollar is at a four-year high. Do you think the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates? Sure. I mean, the, the call from our economists is next year will be in the process of, uh, of hiking interest rates at a, you know, a st steadier and faster clip than what the market expects. Now, there's a, a feedback loop from a rising dollar on the call, of course, uh, of the Fed. They, they might slow down. Now, this is really kind of um, a difficult call because what, what it means is they would import less inflation, but, of course, it's actually quite good for U.S. consumers. So their real disposable income will, will actually increase. So net-net is probably not, not a bad thing whatsoever. Nonetheless, it's, a, it's a probably a line of argumentation the Fed uh, will adopt, and we've seen that one of the first Fed speakers make that point. The uh, As the... Fed hikes, it doesn't really matter that it hikes as long as it you know, steadily goes in the, in the right direction uh, because there's really no alternative to the dollar in terms of yield. There are very few places where you can park large amounts of money. That's number one is U.S., number two is the Eurozone, and then very third is uh, very much in the background are yen, a little bit of Aussie, and a bunch of uh, new uh, reserve currencies, but uh, they're very secondary, and without the euro, it means the dollar has to rise. Have any currency pairs been particularly interesting this week? Uh, yeah, I think the the uh, the capacity of uh, the Australian dollar to get ha you know significantly hammered is is quite an interesting one. If you look at it from a purely backward point of view, we have the China angle, which uh, of course hits Aussie through commodities. There are significant fears that commodity prices are going to break much lower. Uh, why? Because commodity prices have risen over the past decades. They've risen particularly with the rise of emerging markets. It's been happening since roughly about 2002 at a very accelerated pace. Fed, of course, by FX intervention. That has basically put some pressure on the dollar, uh, give a, a very positive bid to commodities. And what we're seeing is essentially, you know, fears that this will, will correct much more significantly on the back of one, uh, lower growth in, in, in Asia, and number two, lower demand, of course, uh, coming for commodities, and the base effect of the dollar. So that is uh, hitting Aussie uh, fairly hard, even though uh, the Australian dollar actually offers some uh, pretty decent yields. So there's actually a lot of interest to issue uh, into an Aussie paper for uh, many foreign reserves. So it, it's a bit of a mixed bag in terms of uh, the drivers of Aussie, but the market is, is very much quant-driven. Uh, quant and uh, looking at the past and looking at the way Aussie is traded, and it's repeating that pattern. So it's giving uh, quite a bit of uh, downward pressure on Aussie. Um, based on these factors, I would argue that they, uh, they're kind of uh, slightly misleading. Um, since yields, you know, valuations on Aussie have actually improved. And, um, you know, it's... it's Still pretty very attractive, so I think it'll be difficult to very get a, a massive break lower and the Australian dollar. And finally, what do you think our viewers should look out for next week? Well, we we have uh, we're going to get some more indication, particularly on uh, on inflation as well as uh, going into the labor markets such as ADP. It's too early for the rise in the dollar really to translate, uh, you know, very clearly in terms of inflation. So the transmission mechanism in terms of uh, exchange rate and then impact on FX is very delayed because first it goes through earnings. Uh, people adjust basically their their uh, their you know their their profit margins. Uh, and then the hedging strategy is tied to roll over. So it takes a long time for 
for that to percolate in advanced economies too, and the actual CPI. Uh, nonetheless, it's something to start looking at to see if uh, we we fail to get you know to to get the, uh, any uh, decent uh, strength in, in inflation, as well of course in the ADP. You know, it's continuing to see uh, a steady growth there. The only risk scenario is is a very bad ADP employment, and the market of course is uh, it would kind of hope that we get a very strong ADP in, in general. Um, the, the real risk is actually if we if we get a, a very uh, negative one because people will be struggling to find you know, where to put their money. Essentially, they'll probably be buying equities at best on the back of that one if you get a very negative surprise. Um, but mostly, there's going to be a lot of panic because people won't be able to figure out where they're supposed to store their money if the Fed uh, also has to uh, actually maintain a very loose monetary policy for a lot longer than anybody expected. Thank you for joining us, Sebastian. That's all for today. Have a great weekend and join us next week for more. Goodbye.